Two dynamic actors, two fascinating takes. Let's have some fun. I'm Jeff Savage, and this is Take Two. Welcome to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Though anime has been around for over a century, originating from Japan, it has built a rabid fan base around the world. And here in America, dating back to the 1960s with the original Speed Racer. With the popularity of programs such as Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z, entire generations in America have grown up with these shows and has permeated many layers of today's popular culture. Here in the Dallas voice acting community, we are at the epicenter of many of the English translations or dubs of uh, some of the most popular programs from Japan. Today we are honored to have in the studio with us the incredible Kristen Sutton and Albie Robles, two Dallas-based voice actors who have found a home in the anime community, uh, voicing projects that fans of the genre know and love. Kristen, Albie, welcome to Take Two. Thank you. Oh, thanks thanks for, for having us. us. <laughs> Fantastic, absolutely. You know, um, I'm curious as to what was uh, both of yours earliest exposure to anime? What's the one show that you remember the most from your childhood growing up that, uh, that you remember specifically being in the anime genre? Oh my gosh. Um, there was something called, I remember on um, Nickelodeon or something called Tenchi or Tenchi Moro or something like that, that I think, oh, that was from like the, either the late 80s or early 90s. It was, it was a long time ago. Sure, sure, <laughs> Definitely sure. Definitely like something like that. I, Gotcha. Uh, for me, it would have been, uh, you know, I was in, I think, middle school or early high school uh, when there was still, like, word was getting out about this new thing called Japanimation. They were calling it at the time, and uh, someone sh showed me the, the movie Akira, which was just, it blew my mind. It was, I'd never seen anything like it. And, uh, so that's, the, and, the, and to this day, it's like my favorite anime that I've ever seen. Fantastic, fantastic. So uh, being part of the Dallas acting scene, uh, how did you, uh, both of you get into anime specifically? What was, um, did you just stumble across it? Was it introduced to you? Um, Kristen, what was your experience with that? Um, I kind of fell into it. Um, my now husband at the time, uh, he had a friend that he went to college with that worked for Funimation, which is now Crunchyroll. And um, they were looking for new voice actors. And uh, I was at the time working on Barney. And um, yeah, he let me know that they were having auditions and they had me come in. And it was the worst rainstorm in the history of man. So I was running a little bit late. Uh, so I got in there really frazzled and everything. And uh, so I got in there and uh, still did the, the audition and everything, which was really fun, of course. But um, yeah, that's. I just kind of fell into it, luckily. <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. Albie, what was, uh, what was your uh, introduction into anime? Um, you know, I, I, I did not fall into it. I, I, I wanted to get into it for a long time. And, uh, you know, when I started doing voiceover, it wasn't necessarily that that was the only thing I wanted to do. Um, I know that, that's the case for, for a lot of folks. But it was definitely one of the things I wanted to do. But, um, you know, I, I went on doing a lot of the other stuff a lot of corporate work, a lot of audiobooks and things. And uh, it wasn't until I saw a friend of mine who's started uh, recently doing anime thanking somebody on Facebook for, uh, for directing him. And it was someone I knew, and I didn't know she worked for with Crunchyroll at all. And, and so I sent her a message, and, and it was not, uh, hey, please hire me for something, because nobody wants it. I'm sure they get a ton of those all the time. But it was just here's what I've done so far, and what advice would you give me? And she just told me to send the demo into, into a particular email, and I did. Uh, and, you know, I have, uh, at this point, I'd re gotten like a, a new uh, demo made up, a new character demo made up, and I sent that in. And I heard back within three days or so, and them saying, we would like to have you come in uh, for one piece, and would you, would you be available next week? And of course, I said yes. And I texted my friend and said, "Would you? Did you put in a word for me? Because I heard back right away." And she said, "No, I, that that was that was all you." 
So that's amazing. It made me feel great. <laughs> One Piece is actually one of the most popular and longest running uh, animes uh, in Japan. So yeah. you know, kudos to you to getting on that show. Well, for thank sure. you. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I might ask, um, you know, anime is known for having complex characters and uh, you know sometimes over the emotional characters as well and uh, very complex storylines. Um, but how does anime differ from other styles of acting that you uh, may have engaged in, um, Kristen? Well, it's actually a lot different than, uh, say, regular animation voiceover. Um, when I would work for, say, like Powerpuff Girls or Barney the Dinosaur or, or anything else, um, when you do the voices, you get your script, you go in and you do your voice, and um, they put the animation to what you have recorded. Now, when you're doing anime, um, the tricky thing is it's already been recorded in, in Japan. Sure. So it has, uh, everything is recorded in Japanese, and uh, you as a voice actor go in and have to, you have your monitors and you have your script. And they play the clip from the Japanese, you watch it like with, with the, the different language and everything. And you have to match your script with the Japanese uh, voice flaps is what they call them sure. um, with the English dub so it's uh, it's trickier it's actually and I, I don't think a lot of people realize this as, as voice actors doing anime dub is really tricky yeah. because not only are you having to match the flaps uh, just right with the English voices but usually when you go into that recording booth you are just seeing the script for like it's cold reads basically so you're going in you're seeing the script right then you have to watch the clip of what they did in Japanese you have to get that emotion that they have going on in that that uh, scene right then and then you have to match your script with the mouth flaps with the emotion in like 10 seconds on the spot it is like yeah. it's, <laughs> it's tricky and it's it takes a lot of practice. Um, I would recommend people that are just getting into it start with what's called Walla, which is basically doing background voices so you can get in there and kind of get used to how it works. And it's not as much pressure as mouth matching the mouth flaps. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot different than any other genre you could ever do. Gotcha. Albie, um, any challenges that you've encountered in anime that are different from other styles of voiceover that you've done? I mean, yes, I mean, everything she said. Um, and, of course, having to match the lip flaps is going to affect how you would deliver something normally because there's, some, there's a lot of stuff that you maybe would usually do slower, but you may have to take a, a lot of dialogue and squeeze it into this little bit, or you might have to take something short and stretch it out. And it's also different in, like she said, you have to have some type of improv skills because, it's, because you do have to do it all on the spot. And a lot of the time, they'll notice this line isn't working with these lift, lift flaps. Let's, uh, let's do this instead. And they'll change the line on the spot. And then you have to do it right away. You, know, you don't have any type of time to get into your head or to practice. And also with a lot of it, you have to just go really big with it. You have, you have to, everything is kind of elevated, exaggerated uh, for it to read with the tone of it. Gotcha. Now, Kristen, do you ever uh, get into situations where you know what character is you're going to play, or is it always you find out when you get into the studio? It depends on the show. Um, if you're playing a lead character, of course you know what character you're playing. Yeah. And I always, always recommend, um, especially those that are new to it, uh, watch the show if you can first with the, um, the subs, with the the uh, Japanese version, so you can kind of get a feel of how the emotions go, how the scenes feel and everything, and that you're not as much like thrown into it just out of the blue uh, when you're first getting in the, the booth, so gotcha. it's very helpful. Gotcha, very good, very good. Well, coming up after the break, we are gonna put our actors into the hot seat for a fun improv exercise we call <laughs> Questions Only. You're not gonna wanna miss this, stick around. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. You know what they say, sharing is caring. 
According to WiseOut, people are twice as likely to share your video content with their friends than any other type of content. Need help with your video marketing strategy or content? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Welcome back to Take Two, where we are going to have a fun improv exercise with our two actors here in a game that we call Questions Only. Now we're gonna frame this scene in the scope of an anime convention. And Kristen, you're gonna play the part of the anime superstar. Oh, no. And <laughs> Albie, you're gonna play the part of the anime super fan and the interaction that you two have at the convention. Now the caveat is you can only ask each other questions to advance the story, no statements. So mm -hmm. in starting this off, uh, Albie, uh, you are uh, walking up to Kristen's autograph table and uh, start with a question. Um, can, can I get your autograph? How is, how's your day going today? Can you sign this picture I took of you on your driveway? Oh, where did you get this? Didn't I say? Did I hear you right? Did you hear on your driveway? How did you get this on my driveway? Is it better not to ask? Are you being real right now? Am I? <laughs> Are you being kind of creepy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say what's creepy? Uh, would you like this autograph? <laughs> <laughs> Do we keep going? <laughs> can we That's sell that? <laughs> can we sell that autograph on eBay? Um, it okay, sounds like that was going to a private collection. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> But that actually is a, is a great segue to um, anime conventions are a popular way for fans to interact with, uh, with talent or to dress up in costumes or celebrate the, the art form. Now, uh, Albie, I know that you recently have had an experience uh, uh, at, a, uh, at a comic con in San Angelo. Can you uh, tell our audience a little bit about what you did, how you were featured and uh, what your experience was at that convention? Uh, sure. Um... The first thing I'll say is it was interesting because I hadn't done anime yet, and so it wasn't necessarily an anime convention. And um, you know, I've done a lot of indie games and um, a lot of indie films, and I had the podcast going. But you know, they put me next to like the most famous anime person there, and um, and so she had this very long line. And and to be honest, most of the people that came to me were people that were waiting in her line because I didn't have any name shows and stuff that I'd been in, but. Everybody would get excited hearing about the the podcast, and um, and I had a few people that I ended up actually having as guests. It's a the scare me podcast. People come up to tell me scary stories. So people I had come and said, "Hey, I, I had this happen to my house. I had them. I'd interview them later and had them come on the show. Oh, cool! So that was really fun. <laughs> um, I did a panel on voice acting, and it was uh, that actually was really good because right before me were two uh, very seasoned, uh, very well-known voice actors, but uh, then mine was from the perspective, kind of coming into this today, that of somebody who has just recently worked their way uh, up into becoming a voice actor, and, and so mine was more about what the people there that were interested in starting could do to, to get started in that. Fascinating. Uh, I also did a podcast um, panel, uh, which also went into kind of what equipment you need, what what do you need to know going into podcasting, and and so that was a lot of fun as well. But it was a, it was a really fun time. I had a great time. Fantastic. Now, Kristen, uh, do you have any uh, memorable moments where uh, maybe a fan noticed you or something happened uh, in your in your realm as an anime superstar? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so probably one of the weirdest things that's happened to me is. Um, I was doing an appearance for, uh, uh, I, I used to do voices for uh, Bubbles and Powerpuff Girls. And I was doing an appearance where um, I was out there signing autographs and meeting my fans, which is awesome. But uh, when it was over, I guess there were a whole bunch of people that uh, maybe I hadn't gotten to see or, or, or whatnot, but um, they noticed that I was leaving with my, uh, my boy, I guess my boyfriend at the time. Um, so we were going to the car, and they just started like mobbing me. Like they started just chasing us to oh, the no. car. And 
I've never, I've never had anything like that happen. He had to, I felt so like, he was like, he was like step, step back, step back. Like he's having to push the back. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not happening. Wow. This is so crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the most like out of the world, like crazy moment. Wow, wow that definitely sounds uh, like a harrowing tale for sure. <laughs> sure. Now, uh, somebody watching the show right now, uh, may aspire to uh, want to get into uh, anime productions. And if there's one piece of advice that you both could give to an aspiring voice actor, uh, what, would, what would it be? Um, number one, I would say uh, work on your voice. Um, take voice lessons if you can. Uh, acting, you need to get into acting classes because what's the number one thing in voice acting? Voice acting. You have to be an actor to be a voice actor. It's not just about, oh, I have a great voice. Someone says I should get into voiceover. Mm -hmm. It's not great like point. that. You need to be a good actor if you're going to make it, and that's the, the main thing. Fantastic. Uh, I would say uh, be prepared to work hard to get there and um, take improv. I would say yeah. it's very valuable asset. That, I think a big part of my success comes from that. Yeah, improv is a uh, a very important uh, skill to think on your feet and to own a own a perspective and to say yes and. Right. And speaking of yes and, how can our guests, uh, our audience members, how can they find out more about you, uh, Albie? Is there a, a certain uh, uh, podcast that you want to plug or a website or anything like that? Sure. Uh, my website is uh, albierobelessvoice dot com. All one word: A L B I E. R O B L E S, the word voice. Um, the Scare Me podcast, you can look it up by its name as well. Uh, and that is, and I'm on all the social medias under Albie Robles Voice. Oh, well, fantastic. Uh, Kristen? Um, the main thing I would say is I put a lot of voiceover tips and tricks on my TikTok, which is under The Wine Actress. Um, so it, a lot of great information for people that are just starting out and some great advice and maybe some inside you know, tips on some good things to do as well. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure to have both of you join us here for the uh, for the anime show here on Take Two. Folks, come back and see us again soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you. <laughs>